To me, I never heard them as a no. I just heard them as later. <laughs> That's <is> fabulous. <laughs> you know, later, not now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Complicated Things. This is Lamar. <laughs> And she's a photographer. And what's interesting about Lamar, amongst many things, is that she has a full-time job as a photographer, but she creates a lot of time to do personal work. And I think that's a really exciting and interesting way to fulfill yourself as a photographer if you're not making enough as a freelancer to just be a freelancer. So what is it you do full-time? Um, I work full time for a company that builds spaces in New York, commercial spaces, uh -huh. and um, I am their in-house photographer, so I shoot all the commercial spaces they built. Mm -hmm. And also, in my case, because I come from the advertising industry background, mm -hmm. I also do their marketing. So since I know what we need for the marketing materials, it really helps when I do the photos. I do their uh -huh. social media. So. This way, when I shoot, I actually can plan for what we need. So it's actually perfect. See, that's amazing. You know, it's people often just go, how do I make money as a photographer? <laughs> well, we're going to show you in this series that you can actually get a job as a photographer. You can, you can. Most likely, you're much more likely, I think, to get a full-time job as a photographer for a company such as the one I work for, um, if you have other skills. You know what's so interesting about what you said there? It's the same across kind of so many mm -hmm. skills that you can't just be that one thing anymore. You have to be able to do more things and then bring your passion. Right, right. I mean, in my case, the way it happened was I worked in advertising. Mm -hmm. And we used to shoot big global ad campaigns. There was no budget to bring in a stills shooter. So they knew I had some kind of experience. It wasn't advertising experience, but you know, they didn't have the budget. So they said, you're doing the stills. And I would sort of imitate the look of whatever the commercial was. And I would just do the stills for that. And that's kind of was another step into photography. When you got the current job that you're in, mm -hmm. what were they looking for? What was, what, what were they advertising for that you had the so, skill set for? So they weren't advertising. I was freelancing with them already at, just as a photographer. Mm -hmm. While I was at the ad agency, I was freelancing doing the, their um, interior shots. Mm -hmm. And then they realized that I'm shooting so much for them. They realized, why don't we just hire you full time? And, you know, it was a good offer. I took it and they knew that I have the advertising skills. So it was really a win-win for everyone. Uh, they're just a really great company. They're such a great company that they allow me to also do my personal projects. Ah, so, I see. This is so this is where they into. basically enable me. They really supported me wholeheartedly with my personal projects. Right. I, I don't think I would have been able to do those things without their support. Before we get into your personal projects, mm -hmm. which I, I love, and mm. I'm very keen on one in particular, which we'll talk about. How fulfilling on the fulfillment meter of being a photographer is, the, is, is your current job. Yeah, your job job. I love it. I love it. I love the people I work with. I love the spaces. Honestly, sometimes I love beauty in general. And actually, you will see that my, my personal projects, they're very influenced by my work because shooting architectural photography taught me so much. Um, I love what I do for them so much that sometimes I walk into a room that's designed so beautifully, I'm literally, it takes me like 10 minutes to get a bearing. I'm like, I don't know where to start because it's so beautiful. Should I do this corner, that corner? You know, some spaces are just really, they leave me like really excited. That's incredibly <laughs> fortunate. That's yeah, really yeah, it's fortunate. great. But also the people I work with are so great. So it makes it, you know, it makes all the difference in the world. No, 100%. Um, that's like the number one thing. You seem to have found such a beautiful balance. Because I'll tell you why. It's perfect, the fact that I don't have to go out there and shoot every day. The fact that I get to go to the office and some, you know, some days I edit, some days I do the marketing, some days I do the social media, and then we have the scheduled shoots. Um, I find that balance to be amazing. I want to talk about the Comedians Project because okay. it's it's, I think, how we started talking to yeah. each other. And I love this project, as you know. Um, it means so much coming from you. Mark. Well, it shouldn't, but thank you. <laughs> 
Um, I know this is the first one you took. So, yeah. Tell us how it happened. Okay, that's the first image from the series. Um, it's funny to see the progression too, because this is literally just me and Artie. Artie is one of my uh, oldest so, friends, comedian Ar friends. Ar Artie Fuqua, uh -huh. he's a comedian. And we've been friends since the year I got to New York, which was 98. And Artie was in a big accident and he was in a coma. He was in the accident with Tracy Martin, yes, right? Yes, he was. Yeah. He was touring with him and Tracy was in a coma, Artie was in a coma, and yeah, and it was really scary. And his longtime friend of Artie's, all of us, we were all just so, so nervous. And I knew that when he woke up from the coma, I want to do his portrait. I just knew I need to do his portrait. And at the time, it's funny, because I was actually really um, trying to think, what kind of series can I do? I couldn't think of ideas. But the minute I shot him, I knew that was going to be the series. And I also, I knew I wanted it to benefit um, some kind of a fundraiser. Oh, so that's the other really important part right. about this. You didn't right. do this for personal glory. You did it to well, raise money. It's, you know, you just, it's just, it was just so much fun doing it. I, I got, I did enjoy every second of it, but also, yeah, I wanted it to benefit um, a charity, which it did. Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. I love this. I mean, this <laughs> shot is so fabulous um, obviously not so, done in one shot tell me a little bit how you so, this yeah. and where, where, where it came from because it's just so great okay so all right here's it goes um, I, I wanted you to specifically see this image because to, to, to show you how none of my shots are really just one click okay right. obviously we have Jim here as one character and we have Jim here as the second character the way I work is that I conceptualize the ideas together with the artist. In Jim's case, it was just a phone call. And we started to throw ideas. And Jim came up with the idea of being a coal miner. And I knew I only had two hours with him. And we're in New York City. So here, that's, that's, part of, that's, that's a big part of what we do, coming up with solutions, right? right? So I said, okay, coal miner, we're in your city, I only have two hours. I know, it's a coal miner after work. Here's the story, and then you build the story. Coal miner who just finished a shift and he's going to a bar for a drink. So then I knew that I wanted um, two characters, but because I had this rule, so the series also had rules. Whatever characters that are in the photo have to be the, that same person. So it doesn't matter how many times they appear, it's the same person. So I knew Jim would have to play both the bartender and the coal miner. And we were lucky enough to get to shoot at McSorley's. Right, which, uh, is, which, which is, is the most awesome. McSorley's is, I think, the oldest pub in it, New it York is. City. It's the oldest pub, It's yeah. great. If you're ever visiting, as worth going there for the pint. It's amazing. It's that a great space. place. There's still sawdust on the floor. There's still sawdust. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so I shot the, for the background and then I had two assistants stand in for Jim so that we don't waste one minute. Right. While he's in makeup and costume, I had them stand in for me so I can set up the shot. And also- Have you already done the plate? I do the plate at the end because- Interesting. I, the, here's why. Because what if once he's in there, I'm like, mm, I don't know, you know? Sometimes ah, you're like, mm, okay. I have to adjust. Um, I had two women. I had one woman here, one woman there, and two of them at the same time, actually, so I knew it works. They really look like Jim Gaffigan, these women. <laughs> uh, actually, on my website, there's the behind the scenes of everything, so you can see that chat we'll, of the we'll two. Get a, we'll put that up now, so uh, check underneath or the link for uh, the website to see more of these. Yeah, and uh, and then you know you shoot for this character and you you direct him, and then you kind of hypothetically have to understand oh there's the other person here so be mean to him you don't want him and you whatever all these kind of directions and then him who's like oh, you know I'm tired I just finished and I don't know I'm kind of miserable and this and that um, and then once I'm happy with those two then I shoot my plate because now I know where they were and I know for sure that's my plate. So you've got pretty good masking skills. You develop. 
<laughs> you develop it with, you know. Because the masking is beautiful on these. Oh, really, thank you. Really, really great. And I have to ask you, uh, the, for the tech people that watch mm -hmm. your channel, what, what are you shooting on and are you shooting tethered? What I do a lot of times is I shoot and then I take a break. I download to my laptop and I show them and I'm like, you see, this is what we're getting. Now let's take it in that direction. Um, and also when I do a shoot with two people, with two of the same person in the same image, I do a quick Photoshop test to make sure it's working. And once I see, it takes me two minutes. And then once I see, okay, okay, the concept is great, it's working, I know I can move on. I shoot on Nikon. Um, whenever I do these environmental portraits, I Nikon's shoot- Nikon's a camera, right? Is that their little Nikon, Nikon? Only kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you for kidding. <laughs> yeah. Nikon, and I use a 24 to 70 lens right. because it's an environmental and I want it to be um, pretty uh, wide aperture because I need the depth of field. And then later I, later I decide what I want in focus and what not. Wow. Because I want to have control. It's all about control later in post for me. I love this. It's Brooke Shields, obviously. And it's I just it so too. great. Tell I, I gotta say, I love it too. So tell me a little bit about the, okay. the, the process here. Oh my gosh. I told Brooke my idea of, I've always seen her as this queen in general. So when I told her, I see you as a queen. To me, you're like kind of Marie Antoinette type of queen. She loved the idea. And then now, okay, I need the location. We got Grace Church, we're very, very lucky, because I knew I wanted it to be in a church, even though you only see the, the, the gate oh, where you matter. go in. It's stunning. It's just, it gave us this texture behind her. It's just, it's just amazing. I just, even though I know how much work goes into things, it's always amazing it was a to lot. hear it was, about it. It was kind of nerve wracking because Brooke has been shot by every photographer on the planet that's like the most amazing photographers. And here's me coming, you know. So I knew I had to do it right. And she was so easy to work with. She it's, was she's such a pro. It's beautiful. So. Thank you. You just seem to be so well rounded in your personal work and your and, and, and your commercial work. And as I said, it's kind of a little envious. I mean, nobody ever talks about the nervous breakdowns, so. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to talk about that. We all have them. Yeah. But let's say that you were to throw out some advice for the young aspiring photographer, creative director, art director, who is just not hacking it at being able to make a living. Well, Come on. Honestly, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, a lot of it is just, for me and my, for my experience, it was just really a lot of hard work. I, when I started photography, it was kind of due to the circumstances of the recession, right? So I was obsessed. I was obsessed. I was, I just, I taught myself most of what I know. So I was just, just constantly on YouTube looking at videos, how to do this, how to do that, ex experimenting. And then also having a couple of older photographers who mentored me, as, whenever I had a question, they, they were there to answer it. And that's really important. I feel if you have a couple of older, more experienced photographers that you can trust with questions, I think that, that makes a huge difference. And do you know how many no's I got in the beginning when nobody knew who I was? Right. And even though I was friends with a bunch of them, you're like, who are you? No. But then you start inching your way in and then you kind of build yourself this reputation. And But it's hard. To me, I never heard them as a no. I just heard them as later. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> fabulous. <laughs> you know, later, not now. Lamar, an inspiration. Thank you uh, so you much. Are. You are. Uh, oh, quiet. <laughs> um, it's just so great to find somebody who's just happy in what they do and seems so fulfilled on their creative side. And also, as importantly, the financial side, you can pay your bills. I mean, that's what it's all about. So thank you so much for thank coming in. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to do a series on these. So if there's anybody you think you would like us to talk to, um, who has a, a, a job in photography, then please let us know and we'll, we'll try our best. Check out Lamar. All her details are down below. Follow her on, on Instagram and all these places. And we will see you soon. 
Bye.